Hi, this is Ronald Johnson, your life coach, mentor coach. And what I do is I help people that are tired of who they are and where they are in life. And this is Gloria, your life coach. I help those who are feeling stuck, struggling with difficulties such as self-doubt, inner judgment, lack of confidence, life transitions, and taking steps forward. And welcome to Life's A Shuffle podcast. Now, you may wonder why it's called Life's A Shuffle. And the reason why we came up with this title was that life is really shuffling. And it doesn't matter where you come from, your background, what age you are, you're shuffling multiple things in life. And the best thing to know in life is everybody faces your struggles and everybody faces what you're going through. But there's hope in learning something about that. So when our guests share their journey, the hope is you learn something in that journey so yourself can navigate the struggles you face, the low self-esteem, the self-confidence. And that's why we call podcast Life's a Shuffle. And throughout this podcast, we share our personal overcoming stories, as well as our guests who shares their personal journey in overcoming their personal struggles. Life's a Shuffle podcast is here to connect like-minded individuals. And thank you for listening to Life's a Shuffle podcast. Hi, this is Gloria, your uh, mindfulness and meditation coach, and welcome to another episode of Life Say Shuffle. Hi, this is Ronald Johnson, your behavior mindset coach and positive psychology practitioner, and welcome to another episode of Life Say Shuffle. I'm really excited about another guest, and it's I've been watching on Instagram for now looks like almost 45 days. She's blowing up. She's going crazy about her authentic self. And she's here on our podcast, her first podcast, and I'm happy to hear her journey, Amanda, a.k.a. Silicon Dancer. Take it away. Tell us who you are. Hi. Thanks, um, Ron and Gloria, for having me. Um, yeah, I'm here to share my story with you guys. Um, so, so my story, it starts, um, I was three years old. My mom put me in dance classes when I was... Um, When I lived in Seattle, I still live in Seattle, actually. Um, And so I started in Magnolia, Washington, in a small neighborhood. Um, And from there, I always loved dance. Um, My mom said that when I was little, uh, I would throw tantrums. And she said they'd be beautiful, like contemporary dances, which is interesting. Um, So I've done that my whole life. Um, Like through high school and everything, my mom would pick me up at 2 p.m. after school, and then I would go to Pacific Northwest Ballet where I trained, and um, I would train there. Um, And then I went through all the levels, and then I think eight level eight is like the last level you get to in Pacific Northwest Ballet before you decide if you want to be professional or not. Um, And I was invited by the artistic director Peter Bowl to be in the uh, professional division at Pacific Northwest Ballet, which is a full time almost like internship training program for uh, people who want to be professional dancers. Um, So I did that for uh, two years and I was in the Maurice Sendak Nutcracker um, and many other ballets, Coppelia, a lot of the classics. Um, And then there came a point in my journey where um, I definitely was struggling. Um, There's a time in your second year as a professional division dancer where you start looking for jobs and I would go to New York and I looked at Miami City Ballet and San Francisco Ballet and Houston Ballet, which I'd all danced at in summer intensives. And I got a lot of feedback uh, about me and my, my body and, you know, being too short and, you know, um, you don't look the part for this. And I'd have a lot of issues where I just get rearranged for parts a lot because I wasn't sexy enough, or maybe I was too sexy or I was dark haired or there would always be some kind of issue. Um, and always kind of felt left on the black back burner and feeling like the reason I couldn't get certain roles was something that I couldn't control. Um, and in that time I started, um, you know, doing a lot of more other things like studying Python. I got into coding Um, And I think kind of the epitome of like, okay, maybe I should do something different was when I got injured right before this like really big role I wanted to perform um, in this new choreography by Keon Gaines. And I really wanted to do it and my calf went out and I was injured and I had nothing to do. Um, So I started reading about 
artificial limbs, actually, and robotics. And it got me to this page on the University of Washington research site in this biorobotics lab about creating artificial muscles. Um, and it was really fascinating. Um, and I had applied for University of Washington and had gotten in as a transfer student, but I wasn't sure. Um, I was ultimately deciding to go to Arizona to dance more. Um, and then I made some kind of crazy quick change where I was supposed to go to Arizona, but like last minute I decided to enroll at University of Washington. Um, and I remember sitting down with the, um, you know, the counselor there and she's like, what do you want to do next? Um, and I was like, I really don't know. And I was like, but I do know, like, I want to build something for somebody. I want to like help somebody walk again or something like that. And she's like, well, that's not really a field. Um, but she was like, you might really like engineering. And I didn't know anything about engineering. I was like, what, what is engineering? I, I don't know anything about this. Um, and she's like, it's a discipline where like you can build things like this. Like the application could be for robots that help people walk and things like that. And I found it fascinating. And I was like, great, sign me up. Where do I start? Um, and she's like, how much math do you have? And I was like, I hate math. <laughs> like I've never mm -hmm. really done math. I've always done dance. Um, so I had to learn math from scratch. I did a lot of remedial before I even got into calculus and all that math to prepare you for engineering. Um, and it was really difficult. I wanted to quit many times because science wasn't really my thing, to be honest. I've always been a creative person, um, but I powered through it. And I was like, I really want to do this. I really want to be known as the person who's the smart girl, like not just the she's pretty, she's athletic, she's dynamic. I want to be known as um, someone who can build things and it's not dependent on how I look. Um, so ultimately, that started off my journey into dance, um, sorry, not dance, um, engineering. And I was in school for five years um, because I started with electrical engineering, um, which was the only thing I really knew about that the advisor had told me. And then I think two years into engineering, I discovered computer science. There was a line of people lined up in front of the computer science admissions office. And I asked my friend, like, why is everyone lined up? And they're like, well, the computer science department is very competitive and the results just came out and people are you know, angry that they didn't get in. So they're talking to advisors to figure out why. And when I hear things like things are hard to get into, it, it piques my interest. Why? <laughs> and I started reading about computer science and all of like the AI and machine learning applications, which are really, really cool that could apply to robotics. And I decided I really want to explore this avenue too. So I decided to sign up also the next the next like year and got into computer science. And my advisor was like, maybe you should drop a degree. And I said, you know what? I think I'm going to try to do both. Um, so I ended up getting a double degree in computer science um, and electrical engineering from UW. Um, and then from there, that's where I, I started my journey in Silicon Valley. I went down to a startup there um, to work on autonomous driving um, and it was a really cool scenario. We were trying to like uh, create a simulation to test all the rare event case scenarios in case something went wrong with the car so that you could test all the algorithms in this environment, which was a really, really cool job. Um, and I had a lot of fun there. I really loved Silicon Valley. I got that experience as the engineer working in one of like the best places in the world. Um, and then my company decided that they were going to close offices in San Jose and move everything back to China where their headquarters were based. Um, and I was freaking out a little bit. Um, I started looking for jobs. Um, and this was the part that wasn't so great. I got rejected from basically all the jobs that I applied for. And the only place I got a job that I felt like I really felt good about was in Seattle. Um, and so I made this really tough decision to leave Silicon Valley before I was really ready to leave. Um, but I knew it was like the right decision for my career and being, you know, an independent woman and not wanting to rely on anyone else in Silicon Valley. And so I moved, um, I moved back to Seattle um, and made that tough decision. Um, and then I moved back. And I was there for, I think, like a year. And to be honest, I really didn't embrace being there. I kept flying back to um, 
to uh, Silicon Valley. I actually still had my partner there. So um, I had not really accepted that I lived in Seattle yet. Um, and that was until the pandemic started. Um, and then when the pandemic started, I, um, you know, had this whole plan to move back to uh, California at that time because everyone was remote. Um, and then kind of the bomb dropped and um, I went through a breakup in COVID and, and ultimately decided not to go to California. Um, and that was probably the lowest point of my life at that point, because I had to deal with, you know, not being in a relationship after four years and just like embracing being alone. And I couldn't see anyone. I really couldn't see my parents. Um, I think at that time I only saw my sister, I think, and her boyfriend. And that was it. And it was really hard because in a time when you're going through a breakup, you need people. Um, so it was learning how to cope, learning how to Zoom people, figuring out what is my coping mechanism for dealing with all of this. Um, and it was it was tough. I had to like basically find myself again. And in the summer, that was easier because I could go outside. Um, I did a lot of hiking in that time, really enjoying the Pacific Northwest and really learning to fall in love with it again, which was my original hometown and where I went to school. Um, and then from there, things got cold, right? In fall in Seattle, it gets really cold. People were deciding, hey, we're not going to meet up in person anymore outside. It's too cold. Um, and that was a really tough time for me in November um, because everyone was just kind of huddled inside. And I didn't know what to do with myself. I was like, I need to figure out a way to cope with this. Um, and that's when I started dancing. I was like, what is the one constant in my life that's always been there? And it's always been dance. Like even when I was an engineer, I'd take classes here and there, but it would always be there like in the back burner. Um, and I'd kind of forgotten about it in my hard times. Um, so I started dancing in my house. It's not that great. It has carpet and it's like kind of narrow. So it was really hard to like dance there, but I, I tried to make it work. And I started like putting it on my private Instagram, which only has like, I think like a hundred people on there. Um, and I was noticing like the view counts are really high, even though I only had like a hundred followers, it'd be like 500 or something. I'm like, how is this happening? Um, and then one of my friends suggested like, why don't you start a public Instagram? Um, and that was very nerve wracking for me because I'm not a very out there kind of person. Um, so I thought about it for a little bit and then I think literally in December, like right after Christmas, I launched my first Instagram and I put some tiles on there. I started doing some social media research and my friend who's in social media from LA, you know, helped me a little bit with that. And, you know, we got it started. And I think ultimately the success of this Instagram, to be honest, is just me wanting to be as genuine as possible. Uh, connecting with people who are both engineers and artists and letting them know that they're not alone. And it has just been so amazing. Like this journey from literally in December to now where, you know, I'm in LA, I'm working with some like top, top people. Like that could not be possible if it wasn't for like all those amazing people who are the smaller, you know, they don't have that many followers, but, but together they make this powerful community that makes me get seen. And so I'm really grateful for all of them. So that's the nice. story. <laughs> so that, uh, God, it, I was just thinking, um, while you were talking about going back to, um, dancing and finding yourself again through dancing. Is that right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, it made me realize that dancing had always been the first love <laughs> of your life. Dancing has always been there for you. It's pretty much your best friend, never left you, never left your side. And it's always there for you no matter what. That's right. And yeah. And I think that's where, you know, when you're, when you get lost, you found yourself going back to that again, because that's who you are. I love the story. Yeah. And what a journey though, like from, Gosh, you know, even I'm five foot three, so I can <laughs> I can kind of um, relate to what you're saying because um, I was thinking about same with me with volleyball is my is my passion, mm -hmm. but I'm not 
I wasn't trying to be a professional volleyball player. I just really had a passion for it. So when I was listening to you, I brought back memories from me when I'm just trying to um, play volleyball, even, um, you know, in, in middle school or even in high school. And even when I got older and just even playing in the adult leagues, um, I had that, which is actually this was part of my story, uh, my discovery of myself was that um, I wasn't no one would ever want me to be in their team. I've always been looked at as, oh, she's too short. She will, she's not good enough. What, how is she going to help us? And if I do the, um, I did co-ed was the same thing. They looked at my height or because, and because I'm a female, um, you know, it's, it sucks. Right. But, um, you always have that one that's always been there for you and that never left your side. And that's what that is. You kind of got lost in a moment there for a little bit um, because then you ended up going into engineering and then back to who you really are. Um, and that's just always, that's the love of your, that's basically the love of your life. And um, <laughs> that's, you know, for me was the same thing was volleyball. I got lost for a moment. Um, I got into something else, and, but I kept going back and going back to playing volleyball no matter how old I am, no matter how much injuries I've gone through, I've given up and I said, I can't play anymore, but I keep going back. And that's when I realized, gosh, this is my first love. This is, mm -hmm. this is my best friend and never left my side, always been there for me, always lifted me up. And I think that I see that in you with, with dancing and, um, you went through all those with engineering and going into school. Did you feel at one point that that was your passion? Absolutely. Um, I, you know, for like, I still, I still love it. Uh, I mean, I'm still in it, <laughs> but um, absolutely. I think the really cool thing was like connecting it to something that I really, I really love, which is like dance and movement. Um, actually, one of the companies that I work with that's still like forefront in my mind was my senior year of college. I worked for a company called Exobionics. They make exoskeletons um, for paraplegics. Um, and that to me was one of the most memorable internships I ever did, um, because it aligned so perfectly with, you know, my goal and mission for engineering. Um, I had a desk that I did my work at, but right next to it, um, they would work with patients and there was like a physical therapist that would work with people that had like spinal injuries and stuff. And it was just amazing to see, like, you're working at your desk, but over there you can see someone crying because they walked for the first time in like years because they've been paralyzed from like the waist down. Um, and that's just such an incredible feeling to, to feel like, wow, I'm having some impact on this person being able to walk for the first time. That's incredible. Um, so definitely, yes. Like I am so passionate about like what engineering can allow for people. It's just amazing the scale for engineering. You, you write this little piece of code and like it can be shipped so much like so many times to so many people and like impact millions of people within like a second. I think that's the part that is really, really amazing about engineering. I see, I see how amazing it is for yourself. I mean, this you can create so much, right? Right then there and impact so many people. So code can impact millions, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, and that's what I found through the social media as well. I realized dance can be scalable. If I videotape myself doing this, I can reach 2000 people in 20 minutes, which is, which is insane. And then also reaching people that I would never be able to reach in a normal performance setting, right? Like in ballet, like in ballet, I perform in front of, yeah, thousands of people during Nutcracker, but those people are all from Seattle. They're of a certain um, nationality, American mostly, right? Um, and mm -hmm. my city, um, but recently I had this amazing opportunity or situation that happened where I posted a video. It was this very woman empowerment, sexy song called you're beautiful by Britney Spears. And I just did that for fun. Cause I was like, you know, I, I feel confident today, you know, and maybe this will help someone out. Um, and then this woman from Iran actually reached out to me and she sent me a video of her, um, learning my dance. She learned it from just looking at me doing it which was crazy. 
And then she sent it to me and it was really, really good. Like she had copied everything I had done. Her technique was perfect. She was on music. And the even crazier thing is if you know anything about Iran, um, dance is illegal over there. You can't actually dance. They're not allowed to. Um, So the fact that she saw my video, she watched it, she learned it, and then she illegally performed it and sent it to me, I just blown away. (laughs) You made an impact with somebody who's yeah. never you've never met, and I think that's 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 the greatest thing, um, and that's one of the greatest wonderful things that you're doing right now too is reaching out to those who, um, like like her, right? Because she's not allowed to express mm-hmm. herself in her country, but she's able to express it through you, right? Yeah, and that. That is amazing. Like she was like, it, it helps me to feel more confident and, you know, sexy. And and that's that's my ultimate goal through all of this Instagram stuff to make people feel better about themselves in this pandemic. It's it's a hard time for everybody. Um, and I'm just happy if I can make a couple people feel better. You know, you're making a lot of people feel better, not just a couple, thousands of them. Now that it's you know Instagram, you're reaching others who are outside of this country um, and you're speaking through dancing. I've, I've seen some of your videos and I see the passion um, through your dancing. And I feel like I feel when I'm watching it, I almost feel like I know what you're trying to say, even if I really don't, but because you're expressing it through dance and with music I guess you just kind of have to understand a little bit, right? But even if you do not really understand, you you feel it. Absolutely. Um, we we did two uh, music videos recently with one of my friends. He's a filmmaker. Um, his name is Benjamin, and very talented. He also did the thing where he went to LA, and he's back in Seattle now. Um, and it's been amazing to work with him because. Both of us have gone through our share, you know, of breakups throughout the years and stuff. And um, this amazing guy called Blake McGrath, he's a dancer and he's a singer songwriter. He released two amazing songs um, called Let Me Go and Closure that are about dealing with a breakup. Also, Blake has gone through his share of breakups. And it was just so amazing, this collaboration between Blake, Benjamin and I of having lived those experiences, right? And projecting that onto the screen was amazing. Like I I cried a lot (laughs) making that stuff because it had me really reflect deeply with the lyrics and Mm -hmm. um, the experience I've gone through and figuring out what emotions do I want to pull out and put on the screen. But it was a great experience. Sounds like the breakup had a really big impact on you. And um, how was it? picking yourself back up and realizing that I need to, I need to get up and do something. And then that's through dancing. What was that like? And how did you decide to, that's where you wanted to start? Yeah, I think where it started was, I think this happens for a lot of people after they come out of a long-term relationship, they, they don't really have a good sense of who they are. And I think I definitely was in that place. And I definitely was in a place where I had this expectation that my partner would provide me that happiness and that success and help me get to where I want to be. Um, So it took me a little while to realize that like, hey, I actually am in control of my own destiny. I need to figure out what I want to do and reflect deeply on that. Um, And that took probably like four or five months of like journaling and staring at a wall. Because remember, there was no one there to comfort me in person (laughs) whatever, right? Staring at the walls, counting the sheep. <laughs> <laughs> it was painful. But when I think about it, like I actually am appreciative and grateful for that pain because I think I needed that discomfort to actually figure it out. Um, I feel like a lot of people, they run away or they might travel, right? That's what I would do. Mm-hmm, I would mm-hmm. just travel to run away from my problems. Um, I traveled a lot like before pandemic because I think I was in denial of my life. I wasn't trying to look for what I actually wanted to do. I just wanted to just put it off, right? Escape. Mm -hmm. But, but quarantine forced me to sit down like in my house every day. I was there 
staring at the wall and asking myself, like, who, who am I as a person? Who am I? Because I had such an identity also as being a girlfriend. Um, who am I is just like, I'm Amanda. There's no attachment to that, right? Like, mm-hmm. I'm just me. Um, and I think that was what really helped me figure it out. Like, having no distractions. There's no, you know, like, oh, I'm going to take a break and go on vacation. Like, you can't do that. So... I'm actually pretty grateful for it, even though it was painful. Yeah, that's good How does because it feel? a lot of the times. Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. I, I'm going to hop in sooner or later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no. I just wanted to. I just wanted to say. Um, I, I like how she she went through it because a lot of the times when women go when women go through a breakup like that or a hard breakup, they usually tend to run away from it. Mm-hmm. Like what she was saying, they'll leave, run away. But when you come back, problem and situation will still be there. Right. So go ahead. So how we talk about, I'm gonna, I have like three, four more questions, but let's start with the first two. First one is, do you think you found your passion? And second question, how was it felt emotionally having this old identity, like you said, known as a girlfriend, to step into this new identity? Mm, okay. So to answer your first question of the passion thing, um, Yes, absolutely. I feel like there was a moment maybe like a month ago where I realized like, aha, this is it. Like this is exactly what I'm looking for. Um, And I didn't realize it was this that I expected. I think I expected like it's going to be this great career that's going to go really well and like it's going to be mind blowing. But for me, it's not really that. It's being a hybrid of two things. I love my software engineering job that I have now. My manager is so supportive and I'm learning so much technically still at my job, which I love. And I have the financial stability and awesomeness of my job. But at the same time, I work remotely so that every lunch break, I can go shuffle, (laughs) which is what I do (laughs) um, on my stories. Check them out. I do like a lunch break shuffle or something. And it's amazing. I have this amazing flexibility where I can literally be two things at once. Um, And I realized maybe my passion is being both, right? You don't have to choose, oh, I'm going to be an engineer or I'm going to be a dancer. You can be both and merge them. So, so yes, absolutely. I feel like this is my new passion or, or existing passion that was always there, but I've just kind of combined the two together. Um, And then, sorry, can you repeat the second question again? (laughs) No worries. Um, so how does it feel being identified as a girlfriend now to your new identity mm-hmm. as something completely different? It was it a big shift. Um, tell me that feeling. Right. I think with the feeling of feeling like a girlfriend, um, I think for me, I cared a lot about like societal appearance, right? Like, okay, like society, when I'm a girlfriend, it means that I'm reliable, that I'm loyal, that I'm someone is willing to put up with me, right? If I'm a girlfriend for this many years of someone, right? Like I should be, you know, a normal or good human being, right? I think I was very caught up in like what society thinks about me. And I think once I kind of shed that, you know, hey, like what society thinks about me or what I think society thinks about me, you know, doesn't matter. Once I shed that, I think, that helped me to actually be like, you know what? I'm Amanda and I'm like an amazing person and I don't need like another person to define my worth. That but it took me a so long beautiful. time to figure that out. Yeah. Or to get to that point where I was like, you know what? I don't care what other people think. Um, yeah. Do you have you heard a thing called um, PTG? I don't think so. Okay. It's really less known. You know what PTSD is, right? Post-traumatic yes. growth syndrome. Mm-hmm. Okay. So PTG means post-traumatic growth. So picture two heels, right? And in bottom two heels, at the bottom is a, a valley. So as you go through all the stress, you're going downhill, right? Then eventually what happens, you bottom out. Then the second hill, you got to go up. So right now, it seems like, you know, through this feeling of, of dance and step into who Amanda is, not what she's tied to, right? You feel more empowerment and this growth is just so huge right now for you. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and I think, yeah, to be honest, like if it wasn't for this painful, 
you know, situation that's happened, I don't think I would have been able to grow. I don't think like in, you know, I think I had a lot of opportunities to, to go into new relationships and, you know, be a girlfriend again, I guess. Um, but I don't think that would have helped me with my growth. Like, to be honest, I have been in relationships my entire life, right? This is kind of like the first year and a half of my life. I've really gotten to figure out who I am as a person. And I think I really needed it to be able to find my passion again. Hold on here. You never... Uh, no, hold on. Uh, Glory, you go first. I'll wait. No, I just wanted to ask her if she's never really had the chance to really be alone. Oh, yeah, for said... sure. Yeah. Since like okay. 18, basically. 18, I think, was the first time. Well, I mean, yeah. I think I meant more like having a significant other. Because I think you said um, you've always had somebody. Absolutely, yeah. So, so being on my own, uh, being an individual, I, um, yeah, I live alone now, and that is something I've never really done. I've always either lived with roommates or a significant other, um, and I realized I really love it. Like I, I thought I would hate it because it's like ah, you're like alone all the time, and that's gonna suck. Um, but. Um, I enjoy it to have like my own space and my own privacy and I can do things the way I want to. Um, I think for the longest time I was scared actually of changing my furniture because I was like, what if I meet somebody and then we have to move in and then I have to cater, you know, I was still in that mindset of like, I need to cater to somebody else. What if he hates my dresser? He doesn't like my comforter. Right. Um, but I think one of the First changing points for me was when I decided, you know what, I'm going to make over my entire house. I'm going to make it all girly and I'm going to have fluffy white pillows, which are completely, you know, like impractical and a fluffy rug. Um, And no guy is going to really like that. And my girly, you know, bedspread and all that. Um, But I finally kind of admitted like, you know what, this is going to be a long term thing, me being my own person and I'm going to decorate my house how I want to. Ooh, Amanda, I feel this energy because we've known each other for quite some time now. It's not more, it's more than a year for sure. More like yeah. two or three years. And to hear you, I hear a totally different person through this mic. Really? And I want to congratulate you on the fact now you have saying, wait a minute, all the stuff around me used to identify me, right? Be vacations, mm-hmm. boyfriend, engineer, ballet, whatever it may be. Mm-hmm. You pull that curtain back, you step through, just like you would be and you know, in your thing in your life, especially in ballet, pull the curtain back. You step through one foot at a time, and now you're fully through that curtain, and you're a completely different person. And that's not doesn't mean it's a bad thing. It's a great thing. I'm gonna congratulate on being this person because now it's so much flow in life when you're able to step into the authentic you. Step into your power, step into what you love, step into your passion, step into all these different things that are coming at you and to actually be at peace. Mm-hmm. Does it make Absolutely. sense for you? Yeah, I mean, it, it definitely does. Um, I think, you know, I think before, like, I would actually like sleep early and I would sleep all the time because I was like, what do I have to wake up for? It was like a very dark time for me where like I'd sleep a lot. And then now it's literally night and day. Like I can't like for the last three days, actually, I've only slept like four hours because I'm so excited to wake up and like seize the day and and do things right. Like I was looking forward to this podcast today and um, looking forward to all the adventures I have coming in the next nine days. I'm in California right now and what I have, you know, coming next. Um, so absolutely. And this is the first podcast. You would never done this before if it wasn't this new Amanda stepping through the curtains. Oh yeah, for sure. I would have never done a podcast either. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Um, so thank you to guys, you guys for asking like the right questions and stuff, you know, to get me to share. And I, you know, I really hope like this helps other people who are going through a really tough time. And I totally understand because like I have gone through so much during this quarantine. Like I didn't even think I was going to survive. So. I mean, but you did and you made it. So I have to ask this question. So mm-hmm. you have male friends and female friends. Yes or no? 
Yes, I do. I have both. Do did men do men take quarantine different than women? I actually have not seen that uh really actually. I, I think it really depends on the the person, to be honest, and like how they were brought up. It's been very interesting during quarantine because um, you know, with the pandemic and everything, everybody has different COVID standards. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's really interesting to see the people who are more conservative and then the people who are, you know, more out there and like, oh, I'm gonna travel or I'm gonna do this. Um And then it's interesting because there's a group of people who they claim to be very safe and they're like, oh, I'm going to, you know, like quarantine and I'm doing all the right things. But then they go out and maybe do some not so safe things. But they know societally it's not good to be blasting that. So they so they hide it. And so it's been really interesting to watch different people and how they have responded to the COVID pandemic. Interesting. You know, during, during COVID, I've talked about this on my other podcasts. Um, for me, this was a uh, huge growth. Um, my life turned upside down during the pandemic. And what I mean by that is um, for so many years, I had the identity of the bodybuilder, the trainer, the, the guy that's being strong in the gym, you know, killing it. Mm-hmm. And really getting out there and doing these weird things. Uh, now I can't stand no steroids from all this kind of stuff because I just want to have this. My thought process was at that time, if I have a strong body, my mind becomes strong and no one can beat me. That was the rule. I don't know where I got that from. I saw too many YouTube videos. But what that being said is for this pandemic, I'm no longer identified as a trainer. or I'm identified as a coach now and this is what my practice is. And hearing you talk about you and what you're doing made me flash back to not. So part of this podcast is not just for the guests like you, but also for the glory and I, because we really believe we're interconnected. So as mm-hmm. you're talking about your journey and your growth and all this, I'm thinking to myself, wait a minute, I'm really getting big in YouTube videos. I'm really getting um, big on um, Instagram as far as posting um, mm-hmm. my videos and talking about personal growth. I'm like, okay, cool. Because the best thing about, Anything is how do you relate it to your personal experience and being authentic? So now I'm thinking to myself, if man is stepping in her power, being authentic, what can I do in my videos, my tutorials to talk about my authentic self and help someone grow? Because that's, that's what, what people want to see. Then and, mm-hmm. and so that's why for this, it's helping me grow during this pandemic and realizing, wait a minute, Ron, you have so much power inside you, dude. You can be doing this, this, and this, and that. And I'm doing that right now. So you're giving me your energy because I see what you're doing. So this podcast is not only for you, but also for us. And during this pandemic, it made me change exactly what I want for the next 10 to 15 years of my life. Actually, the next 100 years. <laughs> change, change the world, give people the power, and let them know they can be anything they want. You know, most people don't think they can. You can be anything you want in this world once you know you can. Absolutely. I totally agree with that. I think what you said about um, who are you as your authentic self um, is something I actually struggled a lot with on Instagram because I would look at people's feeds, right? And they'd be so beautiful. It's not like they're like the ballerina ones, like, right? They're all these clear cut, beautiful ballerinas with point shoes and pink tutus. And I'd be like, maybe that's me. Like maybe all my content should be that, right? Or I look at shufflers, right? Shuffling is a big trend right now, dancing on Instagram. And and they have like the the EDM beats and it's like, oh, that's really cool. You know, like I could be a shuffler kind of Instagram person. But then I realized that like, wait a second, I I love like all of this, like all of this is great. So if you notice on my Instagram, some, some days I'll post something super contemporary and sad. And then the next day it's sexy. And then the next day it's like shuffling. Because I decided that like my authentic self is all of this. Like I don't need to pick one thing, right? And if people don't like it, then too bad. I think for me as like an influencer, <laughs> I don't care too much about like, oh, my my tiles need to look pretty or something. I think someone mentioned that to me one time. They're like, maybe you should like make your tiles all pink or all purple. But then I realized that's not really me. Like I'm a mishmash of all kinds of random things because I am a hybrid 
of a dancer engineer, you know? So mm-hmm. um, I kind of wish I'd see that more on Instagram. I think sometimes feeds are too perfect. And I feel like all of us really are a mishmash of random things. And, and that's okay. <laughs> it, you know what? It took me to do this. So, you know, I watch YouTube a lot now, right? To create mm-hmm. tutorials or just to understand what's what's out there, right? Because I'm getting new into that field and, you know, video is huge for me because for me to write a five paragraph essay, it's almost zero. I would do if I have to, but mm-hmm. shoot a video, I could pump it out like crazy. Mm-hmm. So one day, I, I, I like remote control cars, right? So that's why I was following. So I follow a guy named Kevin. He has like almost a million followers on YouTube. Mm-hmm. And like, they're all perfect now. They got the angles right, the lighting right. I said, wait a minute here. I'm, I'm kind of curious. So I just went in this feed and went all the way back to like five or six years ago. Mm-hmm. Lighting was messed up. Camera, camera was shaky. He had turned, it was just all messed up. So I'm sitting here thinking my videos have to be perfect from day one. I'm saying, man, you can grow from these opportunities. Just put the content out there. Then listen to more YouTube videos. It's not about being perfect. It's about just putting stuff out there and sticking to your why. Like you have a story of why you're doing what you're doing now and it's empowering you more and not just powering you, but others around you. So by me watching a YouTube video and realize, man, I don't be perfect. Stick to my why story. Put my content out there, people will find me. Absolutely. I agree with that. I have actually like a fun fact about my photographer. So I work with like probably six or seven photographers now on like photo shoots, which I love doing. It's like every other tile I do is like photos because I love photos. Um, And what's interesting is my favorite photographer, he doesn't have an Instagram. He actually is not on social media at all. He actually has a flip phone. That's how old school. (laughs) Oh, wow. But he is my favorite photographer because he doesn't do anything for Instagram. All of this is just passion for himself. He works in a quantum physics lab at University of Washington. Like he's really going to change the world. And um, yeah, he does this for fun. And to be honest, those are the people I love working with the most because like their heart is in it. Um, I've worked with photographers. I've paid hundreds of dollars an hour and stuff and I can tell there's something, you know, different about it. There's a different dynamic and an expectation for things to be perfect. And I don't really like that that much right now in the phase at where I'm in at at Instagram. I think right now it's still that having fun, right? The passion behind it. Let's build something new and different and exciting. So, yeah. People are getting tired of the cookie cutter. They, they're getting yeah. tired of that non-authentic. They just want to see the raw stuff. And that's where the, the meat is right there. Um, you know, because coming from the fitness industry, <clears throat> you see all these perfect bodies, all these perfect ripped abs, all these perfect. If you go to any gym, there's maybe one out of a thousand you see in a gym. That's not everybody. That's not. And angles are perfect and all this is perfect. And next thing you know, you look at A, that's the video same as B. B is the same as C. At the point, he's like, man, I'm tired of seeing all this. This is not reality. The reality is we're all are unique and different, and nothing has to be perfect. Absolutely, yeah. I agree. And then you end, and then you just end up living through somebody else's life and not yours. Right? Hell yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, so I've got a question now that you've found your purpose. Um, do you believe you are now living your purpose? And Another one would be now that you are, you're walking and pursuing what you really love now, how are you feeling now? Absolutely. Um, the, the first question about, am I living my purpose? Mm-hmm. I feel like, yes, I am absolutely on that journey there. I don't think I'm at the, oh my God, I've fulfilled my purpose, but definitely I am on route to fulfilling my purpose, which is, um, to connect, you know, people from different disciplines, right? The dance industry and the engineering industry and build this community of these two hybrid worlds. Um, I think that's still in progress. I think the biggest challenge for me is it's never been done before. People have told me I have never seen anything like this. And so it's a question for me of like new content. Like what do I, what do I create? Like right now I'm making a video called if a dancer was Facebook, And right now I'm like thinking in my head, like, 
what is Facebook as a dancer, right? Like, what is the company culture like? Like, how do they write code? And then how can I make that a dance? That's never been done before, right? Mm -hmm. So still on route to that, you know, um, fulfilling that purpose, which is that combination of dance and tech. You know what? Sometimes the purpose is being like you just are that. It's not about mm -hmm. finding something that's tangible or something that's new, but just being in the moment. That's the purpose right there. And it's it's really kind of ironic and fundamental that you're creating this new thing that's never done before. But what it really is is that society needs what that what you're doing right now. Mm -hmm. Society needs that better connection. Society needs to come together. So even though it's been done before, this is the moment right now when all of us need that to live better. Because we're becoming more and more of consumers. I mean, look at Amazon. Amazon, these boxes they ship stuff in, holy cow. I mean, where is all this cardboard going? I mean, you try to recycle the best you can, but what is a consumer of stuff? This is a consumer of everything, consumer of wealth, consumer of um, uh, stuff around us. We're not being too with the environment. So what you're doing is you're the beacon of hope. That's what I would call it. And what I'm doing now with my YouTube videos is it's realize that people themselves are the beacon for hope. So you can create your own environment. You can create happiness. You can create better relationships within. So I always ask my guests first question, which is very important for them um, before we conclude, is mm -hmm. what is, it can be one to five sentences long, what is the biggest takeaway you want people to get from you by listening to this podcast? Yeah, let me think about that for a second. Take your time. Yeah, I think I think the biggest takeaway I want people to to take from this is that pandemic is a really hard time. I bet all the people listening to this have gone through some kind of stuff during COVID where you felt like, oh my God, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get through this. This is really, really hard. But I want people to know that you can do, you can do it. You know, like do not distract yourself. Don't try to go back to whatever it is that, you know, you kind of go back on to make you feel better or whatever. Like face whatever it is that's bothering you and really think deeply about what is it that you really want to do. And to be honest, there's going to be many days where you don't know what it is and you get frustrated at yourself and you're like, I still don't know what it is. But taking the time to reflect and have no distractions. And like, I believe, trust me, every single person out there, you're going to find that thing. It may not be this crazy thing like me, like dancing on Instagram, but it might be something as simple as like, I want to learn how to make ice cream. Or I want to I want to learn how to hike better, right? Like something very simple um, and just trying it out and it might change your life. Who knows? So that's my takeaway. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. And you loving it every day. And anybody that comes around you is going to have the same feeling. Do you have you ever noticed in your life now with this new identity that anything that comes to your life is attracting, means it's more positive, is more engaging, it's more authentic? Just, of course. Yeah, absolutely. I think like the minute, um, my plane like touched down in LA. It's been nothing <laughs> but good vibes. I feel like in, before in like pandemic, when things were bad, like negative energy, a lot of bad things were happening. Like I dropped my phone, it broke, my car broke down, all of these things. And then it's so weird. I've been having like so much positive energy and so much happiness. And like at the airport, I got upgraded to a, you know, red convertible for no reason. <laughs> I, the Airbnb host said, Hey, the, um, apartment you were going to stay in got flooded. So we're going to put you in this more beautiful apartment free of charge. Um, and I got upgraded to first class for no reason. So I really believe that like, once you like feel <laughs> good, things just start happening and, and, and people too, the people in your life too, they change. Um, I noticed like, like there definitely was like a churn for me of now in my life, I, I think I have much more stronger friendships, supportive people, people who love doing the same things as me. 
Um, and it's really been incredible um, to be in this environment where everything is so amazing. Love it. Love it. Thanks for sharing, Amanda. I really appreciate it. So more importantly, where can people find you? Where can people find me? Um, so I am probably most active on Instagram right now. So you can look me up, Silicon Dancer. Um, that's where I'll be posting a lot of stories about LA. So if you want to follow that journey, um, definitely check in. Um, I am also on TikTok. I started a TikTok like a month ago. So I'm trying that out. So you can check that out. Um, let's see. I also have a website, silicondancer.com. You can read more about my story there. Um, and yeah. And I'm, I'm slowly getting into YouTube. Um, going to need your help with that, Ron. <laughs> I, I'm here whenever you're ready. Um, I have to change my 10 by 10 room slash office into YouTube studio. So I've been spending a lot of time and researching that. And remember, I'm here for you. Um, and I want to connect and see how we can really change the world using our own superpowers. Awesome. Yeah. Love it. Definitely coming in for you, for YouTube advice. I will but be here for you. So you guys out there, thanks for listening to another episode of Life's a Shuffle. If you want to feature a special guest or just follow our journeys with our guests and their stories, our stories, you can go to www.lifesashuffle.com. Subscribe. Sorry, subscribe on Facebook, but go to lifesashuffle.com and submit a request to be a guest. We'd love to hear your story and connect on a more deeper level. And this is Ron Johnson your mindset coach, positive psychology practitioner, and thanks for listening to another episode of Life's a Shuffle. And I think my takeaway from this conversation with Amanda, again, thank you for sharing your story um, with us and to our listeners and just opening up. The biggest takeaway I got from this, and I hope for our listeners to also have this takeaway, is that take some time to connect with yourself. I think the first step to anything is connecting with in yourself because that's where the answer is and um, just finding yourself. So if you get lost, find yourself. That is again, connecting within yourself. Um, and again, Amanda, thank you. Um, this is Gloria, mindfulness and meditation coach. And thank you for listening to another episode of Life's a Shuffle.